Hey guys, so Webflow have just released the new custom CSS properties and values feature. I was lucky enough to try their beta out and have been using this quite a lot recently. But there are some quirks that you've got to watch out for. So I'm just going to dive straight into the Webflow designer, and show you what these quirks are, what to look out for and how they manifest itself in the, in the browser. After you've watched this, go and check out Timothy Ricks's video because he shows more of the cool stuff. Um, whereas I'm going to talk about a bit more of the boring stuff. Anyway, let's dive in. So here's a unbelievably creative, awesome design. And yes, I know. How do I do this? Yes. Well, ignoring the awesome design that we have here. Do you know it's the double borders? Yeah, I like them too. <laughs> I'm just going to go through this and just use it as an example of, of where the UI has changed the result of um, this new feature. So starting with section. Section here, it's just a it's just a div I've added and I've given it a tag of section, be nice and semantic and a class of section. So let's have a look in here. What have we got? We've got just normal formatting here, some normal styling. Um, and then we go down to the background color and here we can see we have a color and then this new piece of UI. So this is saying that the color is blue. First of all, the color of the background isn't blue, but also where is that value coming from? So if I click on here, I can see now it's a custom value. So if I've seen this for, for the first time, I'd go, okay, where, where does this custom value come from? And, and what does blue mean? Well, I could change it to white and it changes to white. Change it back to blue. I could also try and delete it, but it won't let me delete it, which is a bit odd. I could detach it and that will detach it and disappears and gets me back to my normal familiar, you know, add a color or add a variable. But what we need to do is look at the custom CSS um, properties that have now been added to Webflow. So if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can see here background color blue. So this here is what is educating this little bit here. So you can see it's very different from what we've seen before. And to be honest, a little bit confusing. Um, but I know this is the first iteration. Now, why isn't this blue? Well, it isn't blue because we actually have some custom CSS in here. So I'll open the editor here and I go, right, I'm targeting a, a class called section with actually background color gray. So what does this tell us? This tells us that CSS in the in a custom embed is has a I wouldn't say as high a specificity, but it's um, further down in the cascade in the order of the cascade than the styles in the style panel. So it overrides it. So even if you if you have things in the style panel, you think okay, it's blue, um, and it. It says it's blue. It has it down here as blue. Even if you have some custom CSS in an embed, and that's going to happen because we've been using embeds for a long time, then just double check that you you've uh, you haven't got a kind of override there. I'm using non-technical terms here, but you you get what I mean. Um, also, um, if I look in the in the browser here, here's the section. You can see how it manifests itself here. So we've got the class section. This is all from the style panel. So this is in the Webflow CSS file. And then that other custom CSS, although there is now custom CSS in here, confusing, I know, um, is in the embed. So if you see, if I turn that off, it goes blue because it's going down to the next uh, background color value. Okay, simple, yes. How does this manifest itself in other areas? So I've put a few examples here. They all look very similar, I guess. Um, but this is one of my favorite comparisons is a container taken from the structure, from the element, sorry, um, structure element of uh, Webflow here. So lots of people will use this as a, as a container. Um, I don't like using it as a container because one, there is no such thing as a container element in HTML. Um, so you have to put a class on to style it. 
apart from it comes with its own styling. And what does that mean? Well, it means if we have a look in here, then now is an L we have W container, it's my timer going off, W container, and then they have the class of container, and then there's another W class appearing as well, which is really interesting. Um, the fact that they're there, but um, there's some elements going on here, that's what I'm, I'm not a, a massive fan of. Um, but we're not here for that. We are here to look at how paragraphs um, are different. Um, and all right, I've got a paragraph here, it's a paragraph element, and, and I've got one here, but it's got some custom CSS on. Um, no, it hasn't got any custom CSS, it's got a class on it, <laughs> sorry. So is that class a paragraph? And if we look down here, we also have a custom property of text wrap pretty. Now, you can tell, see a slightly different layout to here, so, and then this one down here, I've got, say, it is pretty. So this is a combo class. So this one has just got the class of, of paragraph. This has got a paragraph plus a combo class of is pretty. Um, now, if I go into the browser now and have a look at these, what we'll see is this paragraph here, okay? Um, it has here text wrap of pretty, but actually we've got some custom CSS text rec balance and that's because again we have if you remember we have some custom css in here for the paragraph of text rec text wrap balance so again what you're seeing here is elements from the style panel that regardless of how they're put in in here so even if you have custom properties in here the custom css over here overrides it okay um and then we have another quirk, okay? And this is with color. I'm using color here to show an example. So this is a utility class of um, utex color white, okay? And you can see here that this is bringing in, here we go, the value comes from, this is bringing in just a value color white. Now, this one is bringing in um, I'll show you here, is also bringing in something here, but this one is a combo class, not a utility class, and this is using custom attributes down here that say color white, but it's bringing it in slightly differently, like, like the blue. So you can see here, now this is bringing in the custom thing. So now you've got a slightly different way to do it, and this has uh, ramifications on the front end as well. Um, and then another way to do it as well, um, which is interesting is custom HTML. So in here, we are playing with a wrap again. So remember, um, a paragraph, we haven't got it on here. We haven't got any custom uh, properties on here, but we do in here have the class of paragraph. So this should have a text wrap of balance because we've got that in the custom CSS, but we're using inline styles here to give it a text wrap of wrap. So again, how does that um, appear on the front end? So here we go in the custom, we have paragraph with text wrap of pretty. So the class is text wrap of pretty. Now you can't actually see that in here because we're using a custom embed. So this paragraph class is not picked up in the style panel here, but we have that text wrap of pretty. Then we have the custom CSS, which is text wrap balance, and then we have the inline, which is text wrap wrap. So get, here we're really looking at the specificity of the CSS that we're writing. So again, there are lots of ways you can add some CSS here. And what I'm showing here is that there, um, you just got to be conscious of how it how it plays out in the browser. Um, and then, yeah, if we have a look at this one here again, we've got an idea here of we have paragraph is white okay and what i did in the past prepared this earlier is we have a utility class of red okay now that means that we, we're bringing in a color called red and this is just a standard color um but that's overriding that's more specific than the the variable attached to the paragraph but it's less specific than the combo class is white which is bringing in from the custom css property just the the hex code 
But it's a bit of a mess, okay? Um, so just be careful um, when you look at this and be careful with the UI because the UI just changes um, every every little, every so slightly. And it means that because you can't really um, reference variables, you can reference them, but you have to type them in manually in here, there's a slight different um, UX going on. So for example, I could put in var and then I could put in white here, okay? So that, that's the variable that we have. Um, and But here you can actually just see the variable now, but you can't change it. Whereas if I was to, to pick the variable here and publish that, you what you'd see is you'd see this coming up here. So again, slight different quirks and um, don't get too confused. Like once you get get used to it, you'll feel like it's second nature. But when you're passing it over to a client or passing it over to another developer, just have that in mind that it's not quite as straightforward as it once was because we've got more things in play. And the way that Webflow have built it means that, you know, whether it's variables in here or whether it's um, other values or using custom CSS, they the interchange between them just needs to be considered. Um, and hey, it's a it's a developer platform, so we expect a bit of complexity. Um, but it's just to to watch out for this because the stuff you can do. And as I say, go and watch Timothy Ricks's videos. Tune in to watch um, Corey and um, and Aaron talk about it on Friday. But generally, um, just have a play around. Keep an eye out and make sure you keep track of what the hell's going on with classes, custom CSS, combo classes, custom uh, CSS properties, variables, and non-variable values as well. Hopefully that helped. And yeah, see you on the other side. Oh yeah, and if you've made it this far, check out our podcast. Next week, we might even have a an episode on this cool little feature. Right. Bye-bye.